out there, legal warriors. This is a first time video for me. This is the first video I've specifically made based upon a viewer's request in the comments. The viewer requested a video about possible defenses for somebody who gets caught in what the viewer called a sex scheme. So I think I can do that. If that topic's interesting to you, stay tuned. This is the video for you. My name is attorney Lance Freiber, and I'm a defense attorney in Linwood, Washington. My law firm's been defending people charged with crimes all throughout Washington State for more than 20 years by putting out these videos to help educate the public. So if you find this useful, please like and please subscribe. More people will get the help they need. Now I'm just going to jump right into it. So I read that comment one day. Hey, what are some possible defenses? How would you defend somebody caught in a sex steam? So the first thing is, what, what am I going to define as a sex thing? What I'm guessing that means is uh, sometimes the police go out and put out uh, what we call decoys or police officers pretending to be uh, prostitutes and uh, pretending to solicit uh, customers um, on the street. And it's not uncommon. We see it in, uh, in Washington State. We see it in Bellevue. We see it most often in Seattle. In Seattle, that charge is called uh, a sexual exploitation. Um, in other uh, areas of the state, it would be called patronizing a prostitute. And what happens is there's a coordinated effort by law enforcement to try to go after the demand side of that industry, uh, what they would call the Johns. Okay. And um, before I was a defense attorney for the last 20 years, I was a prosecutor uh, for seven years. And so, believe it or not, I was involved as a young attorney in providing some advice to police departments about. Uh, some best practices to try to make any arrests uh, stand up in court because there are some ways to defend these type of charges. So again, I don't uh, uh, take a position one way or the other about uh, you know uh, what people think about this that that industry. But this was requested a video how to defend those type of charges. So um, I think first we should show or go into. Uh, what does the state need to show to prove someone guilty in one of these, uh, what the viewer called a sexting, uh, a decoy situation? Well, the charge would be patronizing a prostitute or sexual exploitation that the customer would face, the person arrested. And typically that means um, there needs to be either an offer by the customer or an acceptance for something of value for uh, exchange for some type of sexual contact, okay? And so that would typically be money for some type of sexual act. And so uh, it just needs to be an offer. There doesn't need to be an acceptance uh, if the, uh, the person who is the customer or the John in the situation says how much for some type of sex act. That could be enough because it's impliedly an offer that they're offering money for this exchange of services. Um, if the decoy says, hey, it's $40 for this sex act, and the, uh, the driver, whoever it is, or the customer accepts, well, that's offer and acceptance. So there just needs to be something, an offer by the defendant or an acceptance by the defendant of something of value for some type of sex act. And so how does the this type of uh, situation typically go down. Well, uh, usually the uh, police will be dressed up as uh, um, someone offering those services. And then, well, uh, typically um, cars or drivers will come by. They might, they might uh, stop on their own. They might be beckoned over and it'll be an exchange of information, um, usually at a car window. And once the decoy officer has uh, what they believe a crime committed, an offer or an offer and acceptance, then they'll usually give some type of arrest signal. And at that point, in one way or another, uh, the driver, the defendant will be arrested and then questioned. Um, so that's where we start. So what are some possible defenses to that type of situation? Well, some of them might be obvious. Um, the first one would be a, just a simple denial that, hey, um, I never accepted any offer. I didn't want anything to do with this. This stranger came up to me and started talking about this. and I was curious because that doesn't normally happen to me, someone talking about this type of situation, but I certainly never uh, accepted, I never agreed, uh, despite what this law enforcement officer says. And, you know, your mileage may vary based upon that type of defense, 
But what's a way that we can improve that defense? Well, if the suspect uh, is not a native English speaker, um, they may also simply not understand what a decoy is saying. Law enforcement has a really hard job. They're doing their best to uh, you know, attack the uh, demand side of this uh, particular situation, uh, the people seeking uh, the, the sexual services for money. Um, so oftentimes, in my opinion, they're pretty aggressive at, at finding an offer and acceptance of putting words in the uh, suspect's mouth. Uh, let's face it, us people in the world want to be polite. Let's say we wanted nothing to do with this. This woman comes up to us. In this case, we'll pretend a woman decoy and starts talking to us. Sometimes people might feel uh, you know, uh, sad for a person in that situation. They may not know that they're pretending to, to be a, a prostitute. They may just uh, want to try to help them. And especially someone who's not from this country, it's tough to understand nuances of language and things like that. So that is absolutely uh, a possible defense that there was no understanding of what the decoy, what the police officer was saying. Um, another possible defense is that, hey, I didn't stop to try to uh, you know, seek sex acts. I wanted to try to help this person. There's a person that looked like they were in distress on the street. That's a possible uh, defense because there needs to be some intent, right? Again, polite conversation does not necessarily mean offer and acceptance. Um, sometimes you'll see a police report while where the officer keeps saying, you know, do you want a date? And someone might say, yes, I'd like a date. Well, in the officer's mind, date means, uh, you know, sex act for money. In the driver's mind, we don't know what date means, right? There's all these assumptions and assumptions shouldn't turn people into criminals, uh, in my opinion. So that's a possible way to defend. Um, another factor that we have to consider is who initiated the contact, right? Was uh, the suspect just already in the parking lot for, if it's in a parking lot for another reason, you know, where they're waiting for, a, um, to pick up a delivery. There's all types of gig workers that have to wait different places to pick up deliveries. And it had just so happened to be in an area where, uh, the police were running this type of sting operation. Next thing you know, um, the officer makes an assumption, walks up to the car. Um, the driver's just sitting there really you know, not, not knowing anything about what's going on and a conversation occurs. And believe it or not, in this type of crime, a conversation can make you guilty. There doesn't need to be any money exchange. There doesn't need to be driving to a hotel room or a back alley. The conversation itself can make you guilty. So imagine you have no clue what's going on. You're sitting there. Someone comes up and starts asking if you want a date. Uh, you're a little bit confused and shocked. You say a few words, caught off guard. You had no intent. And now you're surrounded by police. That's a common fact pattern. So a uh, defense is, hey, um, I didn't initiate this contact. I never actually agreed to anything. They came up to me. I was just trying to be polite um, and you know, no exchange of money, uh, no driving to anywhere to do anything. Um, this is just all assumptions on the police. That is another possible defense. So what typically is not a defense? And so when we, uh, as lay people, as non-professionals in the legal industry out in the world, we think about this type of sting situation with a decoy, what do we always think? We think entrapment. And we're like, hey, uh, that officer uh, gave us this opportunity. So that's entrapment and entrapment's a defense. We shouldn't be entrapped by the government like this. Well, in Washington state, the typical uh, prostitution sting is not entrapment. Entrapment in Washington state is very limited to defense. The way I want you to think about it is um, it's basically the government, the police using um, some type of sympathy or some type of other pressure to get someone to commit a crime that they otherwise wouldn't commit. So the classic example of entrapment in Washington state would be uh, a police officer saying, hey, would you, before marijuana was legal, hey, my grandma is really, really ill. She has cancer and I don't have any way to get help for her unless she gets the marijuana. Can you go get me some marijuana back when marijuana was illegal? And someone, therefore, their sympathy for that person might entice them, you know, this poor grandma might entice them to go commit a crime that they otherwise wouldn't be predisposed to commit. And so that's different than this situation. Police are allowed to give people an opportunity to commit crime. 
Um, entrapment is when they use some other type of overriding uh, force uh, to compel one's emotions to commit a crime they wouldn't otherwise commit. If a uh, defendant argues entrapment, then the police can show a predisposition to commit the crime to avoid entrapment. So typically after a driver gets arrested, the police are going to ask them some questions post arrest. And I remember talking to my police and I would say, hey, ask them, uh, was I offering a fair price? Was it a, did it seem realistic to you? Was this a fair price? Because if they were to say, well, yeah, it seemed like a pretty normal price. Well, then they just admitted they've done this before. And then any entrapment claim is out the window because they already have a predisposition to commit the crime. So um, what are some other uh, practice pointers in this area? Um, if, uh, if a police officer is offering, uh, as a decoy is offering some type of exchange of services, um, it doesn't have to be reasonable what they offer. It could be, hey, um, I'll do X, Y, or Z for you for a sip of that big gulp. Well, that's something of value, even though not much value, and that would satisfy the statute. So, you know, if there's an offer out there that's too good to be true, um, it's probably the police. So those are some ways to defend the cases. Um, typically what happens in one of these cases, as opposed to a trial, is oftentimes um, the suspect can get some educational classes, something about a, some type of exploitation of, uh, of a sex worker type class or exploitation of other people type class um, and uh, some other types of affirmative things to do to possibly get some type of alternative disposition where they can learn from the situation, pay a hefty penalty, but hopefully avoid going to jail and avoid having a permanent criminal record. Again, um, you know, this could be a heated subject. I don't take a position on either side of this uh, for purposes of this video, but again, this was a viewer request. Those are some ways to defend that type of charge. Hopefully, no one is ever in this situation. So if you found this useful, please like and please subscribe. More people get the help they need. And more importantly, if you have this type of situation, if you need some type of support or defense, feel free to reach out to my firm. We've been doing this for more than 20 years. We'll listen to what happened, we'll identify a way forward, and we will be there for you. Thank you.